Taker. All right, Rob, we're going to start on a a somber note. Um, And yet, you know, it it also, look, we understand everyone has to die at some point. And we're, as we get older, you're not as old as me, but you start to see legends, people that you looked up to, people that you revered for various reasons. Uh, Some athletes and other people. you know, politicians, musicians, actors, just great people in general. Um, And one of those legends passed away today. And that, of course, everybody knows, I'm sure, who's listening. Jim Brown. Uh, Jim Brown died today at 87 years old. Uh, Arguably, and we'll get into this, but the greatest, not only running back, but football player ever. He is in that discussion, and many would say he is the greatest football player ever. I think I'm in that lot. Um, You know, there's other ones. It, it, Lawrence Taylor, Tom Brady. If you just, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think Brady's the goat, but not the greatest football player, but uh, the goat quarterback. Um, You know, Jerry Rice. Some say Deion Sanders. Whoever you might want to say, but, but also Rob. Jim Brown was a legendary activist on behalf of the African-American community. And and we know he played during the 60s when uh, things were much different in this country. You were just, I mean, early 60s, you still had legal segregation. And then in that decade was the end of segregation, legally at least. And um, African-Americans obviously faced a lot of obstacles uh, that aren't there today. We still have some obstacles, but not like it was in the 60s. And Jim Brown was always outspoken. And um, and even after, you know, the 60s, Rob, after he had retired, after he was long gone from the athletic scene, he started a Mayor I Can, which was an organization to help gang members, uh, particularly in Los Angeles, but gang members in this country transition from prison uh, or the gangs into regular, everyday, productive life as an American citizen. So, look, he wasn't a perfect man. We He has some domestic violence issues back in the day. And, you know, but um, he was a phenomenal football player and did great things in the community and in this country. And, Rob, when I grew up, and I grew up in the 70s and 80s, and uh, Jim Brown, I never saw him play. I mean, I, I saw film and highlights and, and all that stuff. But even though I never saw him play, he was just this legendary figure. It, he was like a LeBron James, like I, Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali. And he still is, actually. But it was so close to the time he retired. He was still in movies. I remember him seeing him in movies. Slaughter, uh, Three to Hard Way, did a lot of black exploitation films, but other films as well with Raquel Welch. He did a film, first interracial love scene with Raquel Welch uh, in a movie. So he uh, he was just this legendary, larger than life figure, and um, it's it is tough uh, when when legends like this, particularly from your childhood, die. And I, I would, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on him, Rob, because, you know, you're much younger than me. And, um, you know, he wasn't as much on the scene, if you will, uh, during your childhood as he was in mine. Yeah. And if you're any kind of sports fan and you don't know the history of Jim Brown, then you're doing yourself a disservice. Now, just to put into context, you said he's the greatest, if you're money, the greatest football player who ever lived. I would actually agree with you. But if you don't know, Okay, he was played nine seasons for the Browns, fifty-seven to sixty-five. Led the league in rushing eight of those nine years. Mm. He rushed for over twelve thousand yards and averaged five point two yards per carry in his career. He was a Pro Bowler every season of his career. He made it to the championship game three times. He won the championship once. He was a three-time MVP. He never missed a regular season game. That's incredible. Okay, like. <laughs> All that is incredible. And, and, and the, for my money, the only other person you can compare to him historically would be Jerry Rice, where, uh, you know, 
Jim Brown had the record at the time, 126 total touchdowns, that Jerry Rice eventually broke. When he broke it, it took Jerry Rice 33 more games to break that record. Like, mm. I don't think it's it's possible unless you are really doing your homework to appreciate how dominant he was right. at the sport of football. Probably more so than anybody ever has been and probably ever will be. And, yeah. And, oh, and, go ahead. Well, sorry, just say it quickly. And as great as he was on the field, there's a, a large segment of the population who believes that was secondary to what made him so special. Like that photo from, I believe it was the Cleveland Summit, Yep, 1967. Yes, with Bill Russell and Lou Alcindor up there together with him to discuss what was going on with uh, supporting Muhammad Ali. I, I, it was the big premise yep. of that whole movie. When meeting. Muhammad Ali wouldn't go to Vietnam. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and, yes. and, and that moment is something that transcends sports. It transcends football, obviously. And it's something that people need to understand and recognize how significant of a moment it was in our history, not just as a sports fan, but as an American citizen. Absolutely. And uh, Jim Brown, as I said, I mean, he was much more than just a football player, as Rob said. Um, And he actually wanted that summit. I mean, obviously it was in support of Muhammad Ali, but he really wanted African-American athletes uh, and other wealthy African-Americans to work together to create economic empowerment for African-Americans. And to be honest, we haven't done that to this day, uh, what he really envisioned. Um, And so he he had wanted to create something called the Black Economic Union, I believe was the name. And it got going locally uh, in the Midwest, but never really took off nationally. Uh, And I would actually maybe challenge today, not maybe, challenge some of our athletes and entertainers today to uh, take up that mantle and work towards economic empowerment of African Americans as a whole, uh, and not just you know flaunting stuff individually. Um, not that all of them do, but some do. Um, and so that was that's what Jim Brown was about. But Rob, you brought up the football, and just you know a few things to echo what you said. Jim Brown is still today the only football NFL player ever to average more than 100 yards per game for their career. He averaged 104.3 yards a game for his career. Barry Sanders is second with 99.8 right there, but not quite at 100. Uh, Jim Brown is one of the few um, running backs ever to average uh, over five yards per attempt uh, for his career. Uh, That was a huge number back when I was younger and really up until recent times. um, Michael Vick, not a running back, has the record at seven, but Randall Cunningham, 6.4. Marion Motley, who was a running back before Jim Brown, he averaged 5.7. That's the record. Jamal Charles, who had the the great, uh, if somewhat brief career in Kansas City, 5.4. Nick Chubbs currently at 5.2. And then Jim Brown at 5.2. So, to this day, he still, you know, has numbers that have not been surpassed by most of the great greatest running backs we've ever seen. I think the only argument, Rob, against him being the GOAT running back or even football player would probably be, one, if, if for those that consider Brady, I mean, again, I view him as a quarterback. It's like a pitcher in baseball right. to me. I wouldn't view Roger Clemens or Randy Johnson or Bob Gibson as the greatest baseball player. I don't view a quarterback as the greatest football player. Um, But Jim Brown, it would be, Rob, that when you look at how African-Americans have dominated sports or football in particular and basketball, but football in this case, you might, some would say, well, you know, there were still not legal rules necessarily, But a lot of rules keeping a lot of great African-Americans from playing at that time. So was the competition he faced, it wasn't what it is today or even in the the 90s, you know, or beyond after that. But I would say that doesn't stop us, many, many people, from recognizing Babe Ruth as the greatest baseball player ever. And um, so... 
I, I would counter that with that, with that argument. And again, his number it's not like his numbers uh, are really that comparable, Rob, to, to what anybody's doing today. You said he led the league in rushing eight out of nine years. Uh, in, in, he, he rushed for more than 100 yards uh, per game for, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of his nine seasons. And again, career over a hundred. So, I I look. It's a great debate. Uh, I don't I don't I don't feel like it's as cut and dried as the NBA debate, where I believe Jordan is clearly the goat. Um, but Jim Brown, it's hard to argue against him being the greatest of all time. So, simply put, is Jim Brown the greatest football player of all time? All right, let's hear from the people, Chris. Get it started with Rick in Fort Lauderdale. Rick, you're on the Occupy Fox Sports Radio. What you got, buddy? Good evening, gentlemen. How you doing? Good. Good. How are you? I'm good. Yes, Jim Brown was the GOAT. Um, you remember, he played in a 12-game season, not even 14 or 17 like we have now. He played in a 12-game season. He's the only quarterback to win three MVPs. And he was a civil rights activist, but he was also a humanitarian. When you work with gangs, it's not a, being a humanitarian. It's not just about donating money, but it's right. what you do in your community. So working with gangs, I think, makes him a humanitarian. And what I loved about Jim Brown is that he worked with both, you know, both parties. He wasn't just whether a Democrat or a, right. no, he, he went to, he, he visited with President Trump. I'm sure he worked with Democratic presidents. So he was an all around. He just wanted the best for the black community. He, and, right. and this is one, one thing that, that, that I loved about him. When he ever, he played down here in South Florida at Dan Marino's tournament, he would sign autographs. Not like a lot of today's players that won't sign for free unless they're getting paid. No, Jim Brown would, would sign for you. He would talk to you. He was a very humble and nice man. And here's one last thing. People talk about how great he was at lacrosse. I have heard and read that he actually, his best sport was actually baseball. He could have been a major league wow. Wow. baseball player. Well, he, so, he was, yeah. that's a great call. And thank you for those, for that uh, recollection. Yeah, that was great. He was all American in lacrosse. Rob, averaged 38 points a game in basketball in Jeez. high school. <laughs> I mean, and in baseball, you just heard Rich talk about that. So, yeah. And, and just for housekeeping, he did play half of his career with the 14 game season. But, yeah, yeah. But, it changed but also, you, he's mentioned the three time MVP. This, I'm looking through his pro football reference page. Through his nine year career, this is his MVP finishes every year. First, first, third, third, fourth. This one, there's no, I don't know what PB means. First, second, or excuse me, second, second, first. Wow. Well, I think, Rob. Like, like it, it, just it, comprehend that. Right. He he is in the discussion. We're talking about greatest football player ever. But when you talk about just greatest athlete, and let's just say pure athlete, not they did this, they did the most in their sport, mm -hmm. but just kind of pure all-around athlete, he's, he's a, in that oh, discussion. Yeah. Him, I would put LeBron James in there. Yes. Um, uh, those two for I mean maybe Wilt Chamberlain because he was yeah I think Wilt a track would be, the, star. Would be the, the other one I would think of yeah and I the mean high jump champ all that kind of stuff Dion yeah. you could put Dion Sanders in there well I mean look I, just, I, Dion is great right legendary two professional two sport athlete I think even he would say no I'm not I'm not in Jim Brown's class I think, I think he's in the he class say, I think even he would I think say he's that. in the class and now he might humbly say that but in his art. He's in the class. Jim, now, he might not be Jim better. Brown was 6'2", 230. Yeah. Like, that's that's, that's just a different kind of physical specimen. That's a good point. All right. Uh, but Dion was lightning fast, <laughs> yeah. as Jim was, but but not yeah. quite. All right, now. let's keep it moving. We got Kyle in Virginia. Kyle, you're on the Occupy Fox Sports Radio. What you got? Hey, uh, hey guys. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Great. Good. Y'all stole my thunder. I was... Talking, I was going to talk about how he was got to be one of the top three athletes of all time. Uh, right up there with like Babe Ruth and Wilt Chamberlain in terms of just legendary, just so much better than everybody else. And um, but since you stole that, I, I'll go ahead and talk about. Also, I, he was a humanitarian at, at, and famous for that as much as anything. And um, anyway, I'm sad to hear that he's gone. 
Thank you. No, that's a good call. And, Rob, to have such a great sports career and then, you know, have arguably as as great, you know, do as great things off the field. Yes. That says a lot. That says a lot. He That's retired territory. after winning the MVP at eight. Yeah. He just turned 30. And I didn't even know why he retired. I knew he retired early. To do movies. To do movies. <laughs> and according to, to ESPN, Art Modell, who was the Browns owner, threatened to suspend Browns pay if he didn't report to training camp on time because he was filming the Dirty Dozen. And instead, he's like, I'm just going to retire then. Work yep. on movies and my social justice. I think he was making more money from movies. I'm sure he was. At that time. I'm yeah. sure he was. Yeah. All right, we got time for one more. We got to get in the legend here. Mark in Sacramento. Mark, you're on the Yacht Couple Fox Sports Radio. What's oh, going yeah. Mark? What's going on, gentlemen? What's going on, gentlemen? Took, What's up, glad man? Took, glad you guys took my call today. This was kind of, this one's from my era. Uh, seeing, seeing this man pass away. I don't think the young people really understand uh, the effect he had on on society. Um, just just a great man, and I, I'm really sad because two of the greatest voices during uh, during that time that helped us to the civil rights passed away this year, and they're in heaven. Him and Bill Russell flanked right. Muhammad Ali in that picture. They now both have gone to heaven. So I feel a little bit sad. I'm looking at a picture on my wall. I have, a, I have five pictures on my wall in my den. I tell you who it is: Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela. Muhammad Ali, Bill Russell, and Jim Brown. I'm looking right at him. Wow. Mm. No, and that that's a great call, Mark. Thanks, and Mark. you know, some people might say, "Oh, he they're just athletes." You know, how do you put them next to Martin Luther King? Look, those athletes, they had a huge impact on this country, not just sports, yep. but the entire society. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it that their dominance and greatness in sports uh, went a long way in, you know, bringing about better race relations. There, and for all they went through, it still did make things better uh, racially in a lot of ways. Yeah, but uh, so, Mark is missing one picture from his office. That's the picture of Chris and Rob, the odd couple. <laughs> I feel like you guys have done just as much as the rest of those cats. Flattery will that's, get you nowhere. That's right. I'm no, still going to take it's you gonna, down It's going to take me a lot of